The May 18, 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens was a very big eruption, produced the world's largest landslide and had pretty devastating effects on the landscape. It reawoke in 2004. We have seismic evidence that show that the volcano is starting to recharge and now we're all waiting for the next eruption. My name is Angie Diefenbach. I'm a volcanologist for the U.S. Geological Survey and I work at the Cascades Volcano Observatory in Vancouver, Washington. I work for an international team called the Volcano Disaster Assistance Program and we're responsible for keeping tabs on global volcanic activity. This is the operations room at the Cascades Volcano Observatory and what we're looking at right now on all of these screens are different data feeds coming in from instrumentation that's located on each volcano. This screen right here is showing Mount St. Helens and we have a bunch of stations located around the volcano and you can see the live data stream coming in from the seismometers. When a volcano starts to act up, this is going to be the gathering place for all the scientists to discuss what's happening and to form a game plan. Well, I started at university to study biology and it, it just didn't really stick. So I happened to have an older sister who was in the geology program at the same university. And she kind of coerced me to take a couple of classes and I instantly fell in love with geology. You kind of figure out what part of geology you're really interested in and mine was volcanoes. And within volcanology, you can study lots of different sub-disciplines. The primary reason that the Volcano Hazards Program exists is to keep people safe. Sometimes when lava domes get really big, they can collapse and cause pyroclastic flows or ash clouds. And that can affect communities and population, as well as aviation in the air. So one thing we need to do is to relay this information to different emergency managers who then can notify the communities that are potentially at risk. I'm a specialist in photogrammetry and geographic information systems, or GIS software. And so here's a model of Mount St. Helens. One thing I really love about my job is I'll we'll fly in a helicopter and take photos using like a standard digital camera, just like this, and shoot overlapping photos of the volcano. And then I export those and put them into GIS. And with these models, we can measure how fast a lava dome is coming out and how big it is. And that has implications for volcanic hazards. When it's not a crisis, we travel around and we do trainings and workshops to teach our foreign colleagues the new techniques that we're doing so that they can better monitor their volcanoes. We only deploy to a foreign country at the request of that foreign government, and that's going to probably be a really big eruption. This here is what we call a spider. What's nice about this is you can deploy it via helicopter. You hook it up and drop it off in a part of the volcano to measure what's going on. And then we're going to transmit that data in real time back to the observatory. Here's a time lapse from one of our webcams set up during the 2004 eruption of St. Helens, and we would place the spiders directly on that lava dome to monitor how fast it was erupting. This is a seismometer, and this is something that we're going to use to track earthquake activity at a volcano. I interned when I was an undergrad at the Cascades Volcano Observatory because I knew I was into volcanoes, and I thought this would give me a better idea of if I wanted to. Uh, choose that as a career path, and I loved it. If you want to pursue a career in volcanology, get a degree in geology or geophysics with an emphasis in uh, volcano science. You're going to be required to take some of the basic science classes like chemistry, physics, mathematics. Um, I think that a lot of students should get into computer science and programming because you can bring a lot to the table with that. And also, you know, a sense of imagination, creativity, and problem solving are really important. In geology and volcanology in general, it really helps if you do love the outdoors, if you like to go hiking, you have a sense of wonder what the world and how it's created. People skills, we work in teams and we often work in really stressful situations, so it helps to be able to get along with other people and to effectively communicate. So definitely one of the benefits is getting to travel around the world and travel to places that not a lot of tourists get to see. I mean, in volcanology, you not only get to contribute to the science, but also to society as a whole. I love my job. It's really fun. It has a lot of diversity in it. I get to travel all around the world, meet new people. I get to teach, which I love to do. Uh, I get to work on volcanoes, which are really neat.